broadcasted a little bit earlier here than, than expected. So um, we're going to give everyone a few moments to dial in and get set up. Uh, we're just now at the top of the hour. Okay, um, so I see a couple of you have already begun to practice using that chat box uh, to say a quick hello. Uh, so thank you uh, for those of you who are chiming in here already today. I can see we are now live. If you're already with us, you have reached the Imperial Machine Learning for Decision Making pre-enrollment information session. Uh, the program starts on the 27th of August. Today is the 19th of August, so we're just a couple of weeks away from our program start date. Um, and we are here to tell you all about this course, all about Imperial Machine Learning for Decision Making, which is the course from Imperial College Business School Executive Education. So I see we have about 20 uh, participants on the line. We're a minute past the hour. Um, so while others join, we want to give you an opportunity to continue to use those interactive features that you see in today's live synchronous session here. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see there are two ways for you to interact with us live today. The first is that chat box. Uh, some of you have used it here. I see uh, Debashish uh, used it earlier to say hello. You can see and hear us. We have Mircea here. Um, so we'd, we'd invite those of you who are with us, if you haven't done so already, to open that chat box up, say a quick hello. Um, and if you will, we'd love to know where in the world you're dialing in from, what country or geography are you joining us from here today. Uh, my name is Marie Mize and I'm coming in from the northeastern part of the United States here today. It's about six o'clock in the morning eastern daylight savings time here. All right, we have a few uh, chats beginning to come across here. We have, uh, let's see, Debishish, you're from Dubai. Thank you. Good to have you here. Uh, we have Bryn here, let's see, from based in the UK. Interested in, in expanding your knowledge of machine learning. Thank you for sharing. Um, we'd love to hear a little bit more about uh, what brings you here today as well. Um, one of the great things about coming into an online session like this one here is you can really drive your learning. So if there's something you're hoping to learn today, if there's a question that you'd like to see answered, um, please do let us know using that chat box there. Um, let us know what you're hoping to learn and we'll make sure we address um, we'll, we'll address anything that, that you're looking to hear on today's session. See, we have a bid here from South London. Welcome. We've got William from Singapore, Alex from Switzerland, uh, Vasos here from the UK as well. All right, we have Jose from London. It's good to see so many of you joining. Um, let's see, more here from London. Akilesh here, um, looking forward to the session. Um, so just something to note as we move along in the session, if you notice in the chat box, there's two options in a drop down menu. Um, so you can chat with the panelists, the speakers here today, or you can chat with everybody on the line, all of the participants um, who are with us. So be sure when you put your chat in to be thinking about who it is that you'd like to, to chat with, if you'd like everyone on the line to see your message, or if it's just really meant for, for those of us who are who are speaking here um, and who have our, our cameras turned on. We have uh, Aravind from Kuwait, welcome. You've attended a basic course uh, with, with Tata and you wanna know more now about machine learning, great. Um, so we'll go ahead and move, move the session along. We have a lot of really exciting things in store for you today. Uh, so we're about four minutes past the hour. So let's go ahead and get started with today's session. Um, you'll see here uh, on your screen, this is a picture of Imperial College London um, here in the background. Um, and with this, we want to formally welcome each and every one of you. Uh, thank you for joining us here today. We look forward to uh, the next uh, 60 minutes or so with you, um, telling you more about this course and about what you can expect from Imperial College London Executive Education. Um, so our agenda for today, we're going to cover the future of business. We're going to cover um, Imperial online programs, give you a little bit of a window into some of the other types of programs that are offered by Imperial. We'll talk about 
how you will learn in this course. So what is it like to be a student in this course? What are those particulars? Um, you'll also hear from our program faculty. We're very excited to have uh, Professor Wolf from uh, Visaman here with us today. You'll hear from him in just a moment. And then we're gonna talk about what you will learn. So Professor Visaman's gonna take us through the course content and give you a detailed overview of what you can expect and what those learning objectives are. We're also going to talk about the program certificate that you'll earn upon completion of the program. And then finally, and perhaps uh, we've saved the best for last, uh, we're going to hear from all of you. So we're going to, we're going to reserve the last 15 to 20 minutes of today's sessions uh, to hearing from you and getting your questions answered. Um, so you'll notice there at the bottom of your screen, there's that chat box that you've used to say hello. Um, a little bit over to the left, you'll notice there's also a Q&A box. Um, so this is a little call out box with the letters Q and A underneath it. Um, that is a place for you to put the questions that you would like to see answered by our program faculty. So this is a formal place for you to place your questions um, that we will address at the end during that question and answer session. So we're going to be going through material very quickly today, um, covering content at warp speed. If you'd like for us to pause and go back to anything, or if you have a question, or perhaps there was a, a technical issue and, you, and you've missed something, um, be sure to put those in the, the Q&A box and we're going to make sure and reserve lots of time at the end to getting all of your questions answered. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce our speakers here today. Um, as I mentioned, we have Professor Wolfram Wieseman with us on the line. He's the Professor of Analytics and Operations at Imperial College Business School Executive Education. Um, Prof Professor Wieseman, would you like to say a quick hello to our participants here today? Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. Actually, also from South London. Uh, I'm uh, currently based in Wimbledon since our campus is still in a lockdown uh, this, uh, this month, so very close to, to some of you. Um, it's great to see uh, many of you signing up today to this uh, information session. I'll be uh, very keen to have a chat with you later on about machine learning and um, what questions you may have about this course. Great, thank you. Uh, thank you for again for being here with us. That is a taste of what's to come. We're going to be hearing a lot more um, from Professor uh, Visa Men here shortly in the session. Um, I also have with us uh, here Russell Miller, who is the Director of Learning Solutions and Innovation at Imperial College Business School Executive Education. Uh, Russell, would you like to also greet our participants here today? Um, thanks, Marie, and um, welcome everybody. Really excited that we have. Um, such a, a range of people from so many countries uh, around the world with us today. So um, yeah, that's great. And I look forward to um, firstly walking you through uh, some of the things around the format of, of the program, uh, the machine learning program that we're uh, going to give you some more information about today. And also just to briefly talk to you about Imperial. I know you're keen to hear uh, the details from Wolfram and I'm sure you have many questions which will uh, make sure that we have plenty of time uh, to address at the end of today's session. Um, thanks, Marie. Thank you. Um, so a couple of uh, things to note before I hand over the spotlight to our speakers here today. Um, again, uh, you know, use that question and answer box. We, we really look forward to hearing from you. Um, this is your chance to practice what it's like interacting live in a faculty webinar session. Um, so please feel free to liberally use that Q&A box and that chat box throughout the session here today. The second thing to note is we are recording today's session. So everything is being recorded and we will be providing you with copies of the recording as well as the slide presentation. Um, and so stay tuned until the end of the session here today and we'll tell you more about how you can get copies of the recording and of the slide presentation. Um, so I see a message in the chat um, that, that some, you know, there's some tech issues. Um, I might be coming, dropping in and out of the session. Um, many of you are dialing in from your home offices. Uh, and so if there's any distractions or, or tech, tech issues, then you need to come back into the session and rewatch anything. Uh, rest assured, we will be giving you everything that you need in order to do that. So without further ado, I'd like to hand it over here to uh, Russell Miller uh, to talk a little bit about the future of business today. Over to you, Russell. Thanks, Marie. And um, I just wanted to um, uh, point out a few um, few key words on on this slide and some some data as well, actually, that I think are really relevant to this machine learning program. So firstly, um, in green at the top of your screen, you'll see the word fusion, um, transformation through the fusion of business technology and an entrepreneurial mindset. I think that is 
you know, one of the core strengths of Imperial. We're able to convene a range of different um, thinkers and experts from um, you know, across uh, our institution um, to really uh, drive practical learning experiences for, uh, for participants on our programs. So we have some of the world's leading experts um, in machine learning, uh, one of which of course is uh, Professor Wieserman who joins us today. Um, on the right hand side you'll see some statistics and I don't want to dwell on these um, too much but um, you'll see that um, you know, we have some really highly um, ranked uh, MBA programs for example um, and the platform that supports our online MBA program is exactly the same program platform rather that we will uh, be using to support this program too. So as well as the platform you'll have a really um, kind of interactive and immersive learning experience. And Marie would you mind just moving us forward to the next slide? Brilliant, thank you. So, so how, how, does, how does this program work? How will you learn? Um, so um, firstly, you'll have a, a really human kind of centered learning approach. So um, Imperial has a, a world leading ed tech capability that we leverage to the full, not just in our learning platform that supports the program here, but in terms of the way that we design the program too. So the pedagogy that sits behind our online learning means that it delivers the, exactly the same learning outcomes and experiences that you would, um, you would get on campus with us if you were to study um, you know, physically with us in, in London. So it's a really high touch learning experience that you get. So um, you know, you, you're not learning in isolation. You have um, lots of interaction with uh, Professor Wieserman, uh, with our learning facilitators that support you really closely as you learn through the, through the program, um, as well as each other. So you've already seen the, the kind of the global nature of participants in today's webinar, but um, that's reflected in the, in the nature of the cohorts on the program too. So there's a great opportunity to, to kind of learn from each other, you know, work in groups with each other and um, experience you know, people's different perspectives from different industries and from different geographies um, all around the world. Uh, next slide, please, Marie. Thank you. So, um, so let me introduce um, Professor Wieserman. So, um, you know, Wolfram has been um, with, with Imperial for um, around about 10 years now and um, is the academic director of our MSc Business Analytics program, um, as well as a fellow of the KPMG Center for Advanced Business Analytics. So you know, he's a great person to, to lead this program. Um, he's also a pioneer of, of kind of online executive education with Imperial. So you know, Wolfram has been working um, in this format now for quite some time, has run a number of very successful programs. So as the program leader for this machine learning program you're in great hands um, and today is a great opportunity to um, ask Wolfram questions um, at the end of the session and to kind of learn more around some of the content and some of the subject matters that we'll be covering during the course of the uh, of the program itself. So without further ado let me hand you over uh, to Professor Wiesman. Thanks a lot Russell. So um, welcome again from my side. Um, Perhaps just uh, just to add, thanks uh, thanks a lot for the uh, for the introduction, Russell. Um, what I'm really excited about is that I am given the opportunity to teach you in the in the next couple of uh, weeks and months um, about a topic that I've been spending a lot of thought on in the last uh, actually in the last about 15 years. Um, I've been uh, doing research on analytics, machine learning optimization, but I've also been uh, teaching a lot on that uh, as um, Russell was saying, I'm the academic director of our master's program, which I believe gives me a good insight into uh, how, how we teach in the wider uh, picture at Imperial and how the different um, uh, topics of analytics relate to each other. Um, and I've also been involved in a number of consulting projects from a range of different industries um, relating to, uh, to analytics problems, which I think gives me um, also a bit of a practitioner's view on, um, on what really matters in this space. All right, um, that's enough about myself. Let me talk a bit about a program. And um, before I go into the details of this program, I would like to preempt one common question. And I think if you look very carefully on Emeritus's webpage, you might figure out there are actually two programs involving me. And uh, I would like to uh, clarify a bit how these two programs differ from another. So there is 
one program, which is not the program we're talking about today, which is called Imperial Business Analytics from Data to Decisions, which I teach together with Alex Ribeiro Castro. And uh, that program gives you a somewhat high level, broad overview of the analytics space. You learn a bit on how to code in Python, you will cover a bit of basic probability theory and statistics, some machine learning, some optimization. Now this course that we're talking about today, it's uh, called Imperial Machine Learning for Decision Making. And in this course, we focus really on machine learning rather than probability theory, optimization, etc. And, um, and this course is more or less a one-to-one -one adaptation of the uh, core course that I'm teaching at Imperial, both on campus and online. So in other words, um, by attending this course here, you come out with the, the machine learning knowledge that our students at Imperial College have when they graduate with a master's degree in business analytics. So safe to say, uh, what we aim to do in this course is we will give you an authoritative overview of the state-of-the-art methods and tools used in machine learning nowadays, joined with some uh, explanation of the fundamentals of learning theory. I'll tell you a bit more about that later on and why I think this is important. So those are two different programs, both offered through Emeritus. One is a bit more broader. This one here is really going to, uh, to, uh, to the core of it in, in machine learning. All right, now, what are we going to do in this course? This course is going to be uh, taking place over 10 weeks time, and it broadly splits into five different parts. Let me tell you a bit about those parts. Part one is covering the basics and gives you an overview, and that is going to be covered in week one. In week one, we're going to discuss what machine learning is about, as well as how it relates to and differs from statistics, which is actually a surprisingly closely related field. Um, we're also covering the machine learning landscape. So I'm going to uh, explain to you uh, initially, we'll cover that uh, many times more afterwards, what are kind of the major dividing lines in machine learning, such as supervised versus unsupervised learning, classification versus regression problems, as well as parametric versus non-parametric models. I also give you a brief overview of the standard approaches that are available in machine learning. And uh, we'll put on a manager's hat, so to say. And we're going to discuss how a machine learning project typically works in practice from start to finish. So that's what we're going to be doing in week one, which covers part one. Part two is in week two, and that's devoted to learning theory. In my view, that is a very important aspect of machine learning, which is um, often kind of shied away from, and uh, in my experience, misunderstood by many people, even those actively working in the field. So I think this is, this is going to be a very uh, important part. And what we're doing in week two is, we'll first start with a very, very simple deterministic learning problem that I'm showing you, embarrassingly simple, and we'll conclude that we can't learn in that model even though it's a very simple model. So clearly something is going wrong there. And that will motivate us to uh, try to dig deeper and try to understand what is it that makes learning feasible. And it turns out what makes learning feasible is a number of assumptions such as that we, have, that we live in some kind of stochastic world where we get some data out of the big pot of data and um, the data that we have seen in the past must be related to the data that we see in the future, etc. We're coming up with a couple of assumptions that are absolutely crucial for any machine learning algorithm to work. And conversely, if those assumptions are satisfied, we can actually do very powerful stuff with machine learning. We'll actually see some kind of uh, generalization bound um, that we're going to discuss. We're going to derive it and we're going to discuss mostly the implications of it. And we'll see if these assumptions are not satisfied, nothing works. If these assumptions are satisfied, we can do a lot of powerful stuff there. Um, so week two is dedicated to theory, but very important theory that we need to understand in order to, to see when we can actually apply machine learning successfully. All right, that was part two. Part three is devoted to evaluating the performance of machine learning approaches. <clears throat> That's going to be another very important aspect where machine learning differs 
from statistics. In machine learning, we let the data speak. So what we do in machine learning is we assume we have a pot of data, and that pot of data is used not just for training different models, but also for evaluating them and figuring out which model works best. So for example, and please rest assured if you don't understand what I'm talking about, we'll be covering all of that in detail later on. You might, be, you might have a data set and you want to train a K nearest neighbor method as well as a regression tree, for example, uh, with different parameter settings. And you want to figure out which model works better for my data. We'll be covering in part three, which is going to be weeks three to five, we're going to cover <coughs> how to do that by splitting up the data into a training set, a validation set, and potentially a test set. We'll also discuss how we measure the performance in regression and classification problems. We'll be talking about ranking problems as well, which, um, uh, which, uh, which are perhaps less widely known, but very important in practice. And we're going to complete this part uh, with two important techniques, which are known as oversampling and cross-validation. So um, particularly cross-validation is a technique that is very often used in practice, but I dare say that many practitioners probably don't have a good understanding what cross-validation is, how it really works, and why it works. So we're going to uh, do both. We'll see how it works, but we'll also try to understand why it actually works. Why does it give us uh, very good results? Why is everybody using it? All right, so that's what we're going to do in week three to five. Um, and that is the third part of our five parts in this course. The fourth part is going to be in weeks six to nine. And in these weeks, week by week, we're going to cover a different state of the art machine learning approach. Um, and the goal is not just to bring you to, to, to familiarize you with different state of the art machine learning approaches, but in these weeks, we always interweave some generic techniques as well that uh, apply to all other approaches as well. Let me be a bit more specific here. Week six is going to be devoted to k-nearest neighbor methods, um, but we're not just discussing how to apply k-nearest neighbor methods for classification and regression problems. We're also going to learn how we can convert between categorical and numerical input variables. Numerical input variables are numbers. Categorical input variables are things like um, hot, warm, cold, or uh, red, green, green, blue, right? Both of these different types of data uh, typically arise in data sets. And it turns out we can often convert between them, which might be necessary because some approaches expect you all of the data to be numerical or all of it being categorical. All right, that's week six. Week seven, we're going to uh, talk about uh, naive base uh, algorithms. Naive base algorithms are very, very popular in text mining. Um, think about uh, things like sentiment analysis, right? That's a hot topic nowadays in finance, for example, when high frequency uh, trading uh, schemes um, uh, try to analyze automatically tweets in order to figure out whether the stock is likely to appreciate or depreciate. That's been successfully applied in spam filters. People use it to uh, predict uh, election outcomes and so on. And we'll use the material of week seven, not only to familiarize you, uh, yourself with the naive base algorithm, but we'll also freshen up our knowledge on Bayesian statistics, which is very useful because a lot of the machine learning uh, schemes nowadays can be interpreted both through the eyes of frequent, frequentist um, statistics, but also through Bayesian statistics. Um, <clears throat> week eight is devoted to decision trees, classification and regression trees. We'll be learning how to grow these trees and how to shrink them again, which is actually, it turns out, equally important. Um, and we're also going to learn about two generic schemes here, namely, actually three generic schemes, sorry, bagging, boosting, and random forest. And these schemes are applied not just to decision trees, but also to other uh, machine learning algorithms. So again, we're going to mix uh, a particular method with some generic principles that ac apply across the board. Uh, in week nine, finally, we're going to discuss clustering techniques, which are going to be uh, representative of the class of unsupervised learning schemes. And we're discussing both hierarchical clustering as well as k-means 
clustering. And um, as part of this week, we're going to discuss issues of so-called greedy approaches, which is a very common scheme in machine learning, but it comes with some caveats that we need to understand. Week 10, finally, we're going to have our final assignment, which is kind of a capstone experience where we put it all together. So that's the program in a nutshell from my side. Thank you so much, uh, Professor uh, Wieseman, for taking us through this detailed <clears throat> content overview of what to expect from week to week. Um, so thanks for being here. Um, so Professor Wieseman is going to stay on the line with us and um, we'll be here to answer any questions that you have. Um, so now is your, ch is, your, is your chance to put a question in that Q&A box if you haven't done so already as you're thinking about if this program is the right fit for your goals and for the work that you want to do, um, or if you have any questions about any of the content um, that we covered here, um, put those in the Q&A box and we'll get to as many of those as possible. We have lots of time here on, on this session to hear from all of you today. Um, so before we, we turn it over to our question and answer se session, we did want to give you a little bit of information about that program certificate. You'll see here on your screen, this is a sample copy of what that program certificate looks like. Um, right there on the top, uh, it's, you'll, you'll see it, it's titled with Imperial College Business School Executive Education. Um, you'll see the, the course name is listed here as well as your name and the year that you've completed the course. And this really showcases your learning. Um, this is a credential that you can put on your resume. You can put this credential on your LinkedIn profile. Um, and it helps others to understand your learning and experience in machine learning. So this is truly an asset and a return on your investment in this course here. Um, one of the other returns on your investment that we always like to highlight um, in, in these uh, informational sessions here um, is that that program that coming into a virtual program space such as this one here allows you the, the opportunity to network with a very broad um, and diverse cohort of peers. Uh, so if you were with us at the beginning of today's session, you heard me call out the names and geographies of all of the participants who are with us uh, joining from all over the globe. Um, so not only are you gaining a, a certificate here, um, it, not only are you gaining the knowledge um, from going through this course here with Professor Wieseman, but you're also broadening uh, your peer network as well. And you're broadening it across uh, uh, many different uh, diverse areas, such as geographies. Uh, folks who come into this course are from all over the globe. They're also from all different industry areas. So you're able to see how these concepts apply, not only to your industry, but to other industries as well. Um, and, and finally, the, the students that are coming into this course represent a diverse diversity across years of experience as well. So some of you will, will be beginners in that, you know, beginning stages of your career, and others of you will be executive uh, leaders with, with more than 20 years of experience, all coming together in this environment to learn from one another. So you really have a lot of uh, a lot of rich takeaways from the course. Not only are you taking away the certificate, but you're taking away a much broader network of peers and of colleagues um, after the course concludes as well. So next steps, um, if you're interested in joining, as I mentioned at the beginning of the session, uh, the course starts on the 27th of August. That's just a couple of weeks away. Um, so you'll see here in the chat box, our program support team has posted a link for you to click on. Um, that link is, uh, um, again, it's in the chat box. You're not able to click on the screen. So be sure to open your chat box to find the link there. Um, and that link will take you to our program registration page where you can put in your contact details, your name, your email, your phone number. And the very next thing that will happen is a member of our program advising team will call you. So you'll have a live one-on-one -on -one person who will work with you between now and August 27th to ensure that you have everything you need in order to make a decision about joining the program. So your program advisors, they're here with us on the line today. They're in the background on the session. They're eager to hear from you. Um, so click on that link. Let us know you're interested in the course if you haven't done so already. 
and you'll be hearing from a program advisor. I mentioned at the beginning of the session that we are recording and we will be providing you with copies of today's recording as well as the slide presentation. You will be receiving those through your program advisor. Um, so your program advisor will be able to give you copies of everything that you need, um, all, of the, all of the coverage from today's webinar session, um, as well as answering any logistical questions you have about the course. So you may be wondering, you know, what are the dates of the course that are, what are the, are there any live sessions? Uh, what are the assignments like? What happens if I'm late on an assignment? So any questions related to course policy or logistics for the course, your program advisor is the person best positioned to answer those questions for you. So again, if you haven't done so already, let us know you're interested. Um, get yourself a program advisor to work with between now and that start date to ensure that you have everything that you need. Um, so your logistic and course policy questions go to your program advisor, but we do have Professor Wieseman with us on the line today for any of those content related questions related to how the course was designed, the pedagogy, um, what types of things are covered. Um, so while we have Professor Wieseman here with us, let's be sure to use, um, use his time well here. Um, I see we've got lots of questions now coming through that question and answer box, so that's really great to see. Um, so let's go ahead and get started and get some of these questions answered. So we've got about 25 minutes or so to get through as many of these as possible. And I think I'd like to start us off here. Um, you mentioned, Professor Avisaman, that you have two courses that you work with online here. Um, and we've got a question from Alex Berner about explaining if this course also covers artificial intelligence. Um, and what is the main difference between AI and machine learning. Um, so could you speak more broadly about artificial intelligence and how it might, may or may not be incorporated into the course content? Thank you very much, Mary. Um, and thank you, Alex, for this question. This is actually, you know what? This is a surprisingly difficult question to answer um, because uh, nowadays we can see, I would say a fusion of the fields of AI, analytics, machine learning, it's often very difficult to uh, distinguish these fields um, because uh, in some sense, the research communities have grown closer and closer uh, to, to another because they are all interested at the end of the day uh, by a similar problem. And that is, if we have data available in a world that is often uncertain, how can we make good decisions? Um, that is the underlying problem that the uh, that the machine learning community is interested in, the optimization community, um, but also the artificial intelligence community. In my experience, um, traditionally the artificial intelligence community was a bit more interested in how, how can we replicate the learning process of humans in a computer. So in some sense, the AI community historically had a bit more of a philosophical touch to it, whereas the machine learning community has perhaps uh, from its roots a bit more of a statistics, uh, a, a, a statistics angle on the problem. Um, and then we have the optimization community that in, in some sense sits uh, somewhere in the middle, um, which takes influences both from the computer science and the, the math communities. Um, we cover we cover AI topics as far as they intersect with machine learning. So, for example, um, the, the problem of estimating functions from data is a topic that, uh, that permeates our course, and this is also a big topic in AI. Now, there are other topics in AI, um, for example, uh, planning under uncertainty, which is often uh, covered in, uh, let's say, uh, mark of decision processes and so on. Those topics we do not cover in this class. So the, the short answer to a surprisingly challenging question, I'm very happy that you asked this, is uh, we cover some parts of AI as far as they intersect with machine learning, but our focus here is trying to understand what data tells us. And uh, this is a problem that is covered both by machine learning and the AI communities. There are other parts of AI that we do not cover in this course. Uh, I'm sure uh, that Emeritus has very good courses on those topics as well. Um, thank you for uh, Professor Wieseman here. 
for, for kicking off our question and answer session here today. Um, so just a couple of things to reiterate. I see some questions are being answered uh, through text as well. Those are our program advisors. So if you're receiving an answer to your question uh, via written text, um, that is our program advisors there in the background answering. So Alex, you're wondering about that prerequisite knowledge. Um, our program su support has, has let you know that an undergraduate level understanding of linear algebra, probability and statistics um, is what you need here. Um, and it is not required to know R or Python programs before coming into the course. So I wanted to call those out because that's a, Alex, that's a very common question that we get with this course here, um, is, is what kind of understanding do I need go, going into it? Um, yes, let me, yes. sorry, Marie, is, uh, am I, uh, would you mind if I comment a bit on that as well, even though pro, uh, program support is also covering that? So what is important for me is, um, we have designed this program in mind with somebody who is not afraid of mathematics, but who is not necessarily any more intimately close to uh, advanced mathematics, let's say. We, we expect that you have a good high school knowledge of mathematics. We expect that many of you probably had some math related courses in, in your undergraduate degree as well. However, most of the topics, most of the math topics that we cover, we try to review uh, the, the principles behind it again. So when we cover certain things from probability theory, such as Bayes' theorem, we're actually covering Bayes' theorem again. Um, so, so hopefully the mathematical prerequisites are mostly based on you need to be comfortable working with numbers. You need to be comfortable working with data and with mathematical concepts. We try to review what is uh, needed along the way, uh, but do please plan in some more time if you feel you are not very uh, close to your high school math anymore, right? Uh, I think it can, be, it can be compensated for also with the help of our great program support, but you should calculate in a bit more time per week if you feel um, that you're less familiar with that. The other point is coding. What kind of coding is being used in this class and what kind of coding prerequisites are required? <clears throat> We're going to do our coding in Python in this class, which I think is a, is a well, I made a choice. So um, uh, I made it for a reason. I think Python becomes the lingua franca in machine learning. So independently of whether you take this course or not, Hopefully you do, but if you don't, take this away from it. If you haven't learned Python, it is a good time. It's always a good time to start learning Python. Um, we don't require you to know Python. Again, if you don't know Python, we will provide you with a primer and help is at hand, but plan in more time per week to spend so that you get up to speed with Python as well. All the assignments will contain Python elements. However, they will be in a guided fashion. So we will share some Jupyter notebooks with you. We will have prepared stuff and we will guide you in, um, in terms of how to, how to use Python. I think this segues really nicely into another question that we have related to the, the assignments in the course. So um, you do need to complete six out of the eight graded assignments along with the final assignment project to successfully complete the program. Um, but we have a question here about that final project deliverable. Um, uh, Debashish is wondering, could you tell us a little bit more about it? What are some of the examples can you provide from maybe previous participants? Um, so how is that project deliverable designed? And, and what can students expect um, for that final project? Uh, yes. Uh, so the thing is, um, I can't share too much information about that yet. We're still actively iterating over it. But uh, broadly, what you can expect from the final assignment is it will be kind of, it will be designed as a project that brings together the different parts of, uh, of the techniques that we have learned in this course. So you can expect to, to be given some kind of data set and you will have to, uh, tr uh, to experiment with different machine learning methods uh, to uh, apply it on that, on that data set um, to come up with managerial, uh, managerially relevant uh, conclusions. So it will be a mix of using techniques, but also using sound judgment afterwards um, based on that. <clears throat> 
So I like to see it as a capstone. It is really uh, what brings together all the different things we have learned in class at the, at the end of it. You might ask yourself, by the way, why graded assignments? Um, this uh, links to another point, which I think program support is answering already that question, but uh, I think it's nice to pick that up as well. We are looking into, <laughs> we're looking into creating a pathway from this online degree here, from this online program into our master's program in business analytics at Imperl as well. Because I mentioned to you earlier on, this is pretty much a one-to-one -one, um, conversion of our uh, machine learning program at Imperl. Um, we are serious about that, which means that if you complete this course successfully, we want to give you some kind of credit for your degree at Imperl should you decide to, uh, to apply for Imperl. Um, so that's why um, we, we want your uh, certificate here really to mean something um, for your later life. And uh, we demonstrate this proactively by saying to the world, it certainly means something for us. If you have taken this course and you have done this well, then we, um, and then we accredit this for our own master's program. The details are still to be worked out there. We would, uh, we would certainly keep you posted on that end. Right. I don't, I don't know if we still have a uh, Russell Miller with us on the line here from Imperial, but uh, we do have a couple of questions related to that certificate and some of those other course offerings at Imperial. So I want to give you an opportunity, Russell, to kind of respond. So a bid is asking, well, is the certificate really widely recognized? Um, Vincent is, is wondering about, you know, again, and, and Professor Wieseman touched on this, how the, the credit for this course might apply to a larger master's program. Can you speak a little bit about, uh, about these, these questions here, Russell? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Marie. Um, and really just to build on, on um, you know, what Wolfram uh, talked about, you know, the, the programs are you know, academically re really quite rigorous. I mean, it's executive education, so we're we're designing these programs to help you um, get better in your workplace, right? So um, there, there's a very practical focus to, to the programs for sure. Um, but as Wolfram um, said quite rightly, these are rigorous programs. Imperial obviously is um, a highly recognized institution you know, globally ranked in the, in the top 10. So these are, Imperial is a, a prestigious institution. These programs are rigorous, but at the same time, very, very practical. So, um, you know, uh, the, the, the links between this program and um, our master's program are, are very strong. Um, certainly, if you were to complete uh, these pro this program or any other program, actually, within the, uh, the portfolio, uh, and then subsequently want to apply to the business school for you know, um, a master's program, this, this, would, um, this would stand you in good stead. So even if it isn't um, academically credit bearing, another program, for example, the fact that you've, you've worked at this level and can demonstrate it uh, will stand you in very good stead. So it's an executive education program, but at the same time, it's very rigorous in terms of um, its academic credentials. Um, and the same goes uh, for, for all of our programs um, you know, across the board, whether they're online or um, on campus with us um, through um, our executive education offering more broadly. Great, thank you, thank you, Russell, um, for for giving a little bit more of an overview of Imperial courses that are available. Um, we always get questions related to a specific industries, and we have a couple that are pending here. Um, Akilesh uh, is wondering about if you could explain some of the cases that are covered and, and what domains they fall in. Um, you know, Abid is wondering: Are there anything that's in the course that's applied specifically to finance? Um, so, Professor Wieseman, can you talk about how the course was designed to apply across different industries and domains? Thank you. Yes, uh, definitely. Um, we try to create a course that is, in some sense, industry agnostic, or perhaps agnostic is not the right word, that is applicable to a broad range of industries. So, we are going to work with data sets in this course that uh, reflect this. Um, they come from a broad range of uh, industries. We have um, biological or health data, we have uh, financial data, we have, um, we have really different types of data. The important bit is the methods that we learn 
we have different data sets from, from different industries, but really the methods that we are learning are methods that are applicable across industries. Whether you work in finance, whether you work in construction, whether you work in marketing, um, for example, regression and classification trees are used universally across those sectors. Um, we will see, as I said, different data sets to get you a flavor of what, uh, what, happened, what is going on in different industries, but really the methods that we're discussing as well as how to evaluate these methods, that is the same across industries. Um, so in that sense, um, Yes, we do, as one of the questions uh, was, uh, was hinting at, yes, we do have a financial data set that we work on, but um, in some sense, whether that was a financial data set or a data set from a different field would not matter that much for the validity of the method. Great, so I think we are, um, let me just do a quick time check for us. We're about 15 minutes here to the top of the hour. so. Uh, we want to make sure we, we get through as many of these questions here as possible. And I thought we, we had a really great one here from an anonymous attendee. Um, we know during today's, you know, kind of global pandemic that we're all faced with, many of us are in between jobs or we're looking for, for new skills um, or we're, we're sort of on the job market or planning to be on the job market. Um, so we have an anonymous attendee wondering about this course. Um, will attending machine learning for decision-making program help us get a new job? Is this something that can help us um, strengthen um, our, our resume in the job market? Um, and, and can you share any, uh, you know, new positions and so forth that, that may be uh, available to, to students after completing this course here? Um, so could you speak a little bit about how career planning was uh, incorporated in the design of the course here and, and ways in which this course might help on the job market? Thank you, Marie, and uh, thank you for whoever wrote this. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, Certainly, this program, as Russell was saying, uh, being an executive education program at Imperial College, we designed it with, uh, with well, two and a half uh, uh, objectives in mind. Uh, the, the, first primary, the first two primary objectives are people that are currently in job, in their jobs, and want to perhaps move up or into a different role that is more data related, as well as people that are looking to perhaps leave their current job or start a new job somewhere uh, data related. Um, a, further, uh, a further objective, just in in case you wonder why I said two and a half is, of course, this program also builds a bridge to Imperial College to our master's programs. Now, how do we, what kind of roles do we have in mind there? Um, this this uh, executive course will not prepare you, let's say, for a 24-7 uh, back-end job where you're going to uh, code uh, like uh, production level uh, code in C++ or whatever um, uh, somewhere. For that, you would need a computer science degree, um, which some of you might have, others don't. Uh, but what this, what this course is about is to position you for in some sense interface roles between the production level programmers at the back end of the company and management that would like to that that needs to get insights into data you will be uh, you will be ideally placed for um, for looking at data sets um, analyzing data sets and making sound judgment based on these data sets that can be reported to senior management now <laughs> Um, will this uh, will will attending this course automatically ensure that you that you get a role somewhere in your favorite industry? Of course, I can't guarantee this, right? Um, but I think it puts you ahead of the curve, right? It shows to uh, to your own company, poten to potential future employers, that you that you have that you are eager to learn about this, that you are qualified through the certificate that you that you receive, that you have gone through all these graded assignments and completed them. To, uh, to satisfaction, and that is a very strong signal, right? Um, we, um, perhaps emeritus can say something about the statistics with online degrees. I can't, uh, I can't, uh, I don't have a good view on this, but what I can say is, for example, from the people that study at Imperial at our, um, in our programs, 
I think the statistics is always around 97% of the students have a job within three months in one of the industries that they were aiming at. This shows that kind of education at Imperial, and this is of course part of the educational package that we offer at Imperial, that education at Imperial is highly valued by employers. Um, that, is, that, is, that is my view. Russell, I don't know whether you want to add something from your end on that. I think I think everything that you said, uh, Wolfram, is one hundred percent correct. And um, you know, across executive education, what, what we see is, you know, and what we hear from program participants from you know, past iterations of, of this program and for you know other pro, uh, programs within the portfolio that we offer, um, you know, is that uh, you know taking the opportunity to learn right now um, with the difficulties that you know are out there in terms of the world of employment is a really smart move. So I think it's, it, it is about the knowledge that you have for sure. So this program will certainly equip you very well with um, you know, the content that you need to, to kind of, or the, the skills that you need to be able to work in those types of interface roles that, that Wolfram des described for sure, uh, without a doubt. I think equally important is it demonstrates a mindset um, that you bring to, um, to potential employers as well uh, in the, you know, you have a, a you're you're using your time very effectively. You know, you can make discerning choices around the types of learning uh, that that you want to um to to do to further your career, um and also the timing of that as well. So, you know, I think across the board within executive education, certainly at Imperial, we we're, we're seeing that this is a fantastic time to you know join a program. Um, if you're looking at either you know a, a change of career, you're looking to advance within your own existing company or perhaps as a kind of unintentional sort of outfall of, of the whole COVID-19 uh, pandemic that we're facing that you're kind of you know, unexpectedly in that job market. So this does give you, um, without a doubt, um, you know, a, a step up um, and you know, put some clear water between you and, and what is now a very competitive jobs market. Uh, Russell and, and Professor Wiesemann, there's, there's another question related to deep learning. It's now been upvoted by our participants, so we've got a couple of folks really eager to know more about, you know, does this course touch on it? Are there other courses at Imperial that touches on uh, deep learning? Thank you. Great, uh, great question. I'm very happy to receive that question. The answer is no, and let me, let me try to explain why. Mm. For those of you that are not familiar with deep learning, just a, a very, very brief outline here. Um, already, oh, already a couple of decades ago, quite a number of decades ago, researchers um, started to, back then in the AI community, started to try to understand how the human brain works, how the human brain might learn. And uh, what they have done is they have built models of the human brain, which were called neural networks, which kind of um, reduced the complexity of the human brain to a very simplistic model. Uh, neural networks have been around for a long, long time. And um, in the last perhaps 15 years or something, we have seen, this, uh, we have seen a number of uh, media articles as well as a lot of research on deep learning, which is really neural networks that are very large in size that have a large number of neurons. Mm. This is driven by a number of factors. Uh, it is driven by uh, the fact that we now have the computational power to uh, to work with these deep neural networks. In particular, we have so-called GPUs, um, which, uh, which help us uh, solve these monstrous optimization problems um, uh, th that we need to solve in order to train a neural network. Um, and there have been some very high profile cases online by companies like Google, uh, and others where they showed that they can do some really cool stuff with deep learning, such as, um, I don't know, uh, lip reading or playing um, in, in connection with uh, some other techniques, playing some uh, computer games at the level of experts. Um, so why are we not covering that in our courses? The answer is the following. Um, neural networks, while they have received a lot of media attention lately, in my very best experience, and also in the experience of many of my colleagues, they don't find that much application actually in industry. So why is that? The reason for that is neural networks can be very powerful in learning, but you need huge, huge, amount of state, huge amounts of data to train them. Now, 
when do you have huge amounts of data to train them? Well, for example, in applications like lip breeding, where you have uh, literally like thousands of years of uh, videos on the internet that you can download and use to train uh, your neural network. Um, in applications like computer games, right, where you can let computers play against e each other and you can let them play for weeks at a time. But many uh, data sets that we actually have in industry are very small. We, uh, if, you, if you look at many real life data sets, you might have a few hundred, a few thousand, at most perhaps a few million records. With those type of data sets, neural networks are typically not the method of choice. So uh, the reason why we intentionally left out neural networks is because in my best experience with, uh, with the consulting projects that I've been running is they are way less popular in actual industry then perhaps some media articles and some cutting edge research uh, might suggest that you see online. So you can see uh, that a lot of thought was put into the way that the course was designed, what to incorporate, incorporate what not to incorporate um, uh, in order to make this program the very best possible program um, for your learning journey. Um, we have one final question here. Um, I'm, I'm just aware of the time. We've, we've got about five minutes left to go here. Um, we have a, a prof it sounds like a professor or a teacher here on the line. It's an anonymous attendee um, who'd like to offer her students uh, within her department a final module course on data science. Um, but uh, he or she will not be the actual module leader since this is an online course uh, being delivered by Imperial. Um, so would, would this course be suitable for such a circumstance? Um, and is it going to provide the rudimentary knowledge needed for students who might be very, very beginning uh, in, into, these, into these concepts here? Yes, I think that would be a very good, uh, that would be a very good choice. Um, now, did I understand it correctly? It is somebody within Imperial College or uh, that, uh, uh, sorry, that was my misunderstanding then. No, I think uh, this course would be, would be good to, the, the thing about this course is, right, we start basically at uh, zero. We cover a lot of ground in these 10 weeks. You will have, I think we'll have a fun time. It will also be a busy time. Um, but the key thing is we don't expect any prior knowledge in data science machine learning. So you can, you can start from, uh, from zero uh, other than uh, kind of an um, enthusiasm to learn and uh, not being afraid to um, not being afraid uh, to, to learn about math. Um, uh, but um, but uh, by the end of it, you should really be able to, um, to bring data science machine learning projects to a successful conclusion. That is our aim. And I think the capstone will also demonstrate that. Um, in your particular case, perhaps if, um, if I haven't been able to answer your question fully, why don't you get in touch with me personally as well. We can, we can uh, have a chat over email about that. Uh, if you Google my name, you'll find my, my email address, et cetera, online. Uh, that's, a, that's a great offer. Um, and, I, and I'll just follow that with, we also have an email address uh, for, for some of those larger questions that you might have about the program as well. So our program support team will post that here uh, once again in the chat box, um, but you can go to imperial at emeritus.org um, with, with questions. And, and if you can't find uh, Professor Wiesemann's email address, you know, we can connect you and, and, uh, and be, the, be the spokesperson between the two of you and make sure that you get connected and get all the, an the answers to the questions uh, that you have here. So notice in that chat box there, you'll see it again. There's the, the small link that you can click on uh, that will take you over to the registration page um, so that you can acquire a program advisor to work with you. Um, there's also that email address, emeritus at imperial, or imperial rather, at emeritus.org. Um, so with that, we're, we're sort of reaching the top of our session here. Um, and I'd like to give you both an opportunity, Russell Miller and Professor Wiesemann, uh, to, to give a final send-off message to uh, the participants who are here with us uh, today on the line. Um, before I hand it over to you, 
Um, I saw a lot of questions come through the Q&A box that were logistical in nature. Um, what are the prerequisites that are needed? What are the dates of the course? How many times has the course been run? Are there flexible payment options? A lot of those logistical and course policy related questions, your program advisors will be able to answer for you. Um, so please do click on that link and get an advisor um, before you leave today's session. Uh, so with that, I'd like to turn it over to Professor Wieseman um, and Russell Miller here uh, as a final send off. Um, any words of advice uh, that you would give uh, participants on the line who are thinking about joining the course. Maybe we'll start with you, uh, Professor Wiesman. I see you've got your mic off. Right. Uh, thank you, Marie. So first of all, I think it's really great that you joined today's webinar. You're making the first step into a direction that I can only wholeheartedly support. And let me be completely honest. Um, I think we I think we put together a very good program. I would be excited to see you on this program. But more importantly, um, if you're thinking about learning more about machine learning, and I assume you are, given that you are uh, given that you're attending this uh, webinar here, it is an excellent time for doing so. And I can only uh, support you in that decision. I think it's a great decision. Get your hands uh, dirty with this uh, with this topic, however you do it. Um, get your uh, get uh, get yourself familiarized with uh, Python as well. Be it through attending uh, this course where we train you in Python, but also you can you can do it yourself. Or there are plenty of other good courses. Um, I think um, it uh, th there has seldom been a better time for that, and I believe it will uh, first of all help you a lot with your career, and secondly, it will be a very fun and stimulating experience as well. Thank you. Thanks, Wolfram. And just a final note from me. I mean, firstly, thank you again for, for joining the webinar today. It's great to see so many people from um, you know, so many different places around the world. That's fantastic. And um, you know, I just wanted to reiterate the point um, that Wolfram made. I mean, this is a really fun and engaging um, and very important um, subject matter, um, too. Um, and the format of the program you know, is great, particularly right now, you know, where you know, going to campus is you know, more challenging, perhaps, than, than it's ever been. Uh, before. This is a, you know, not only great content, but the way in which we've designed the program from a pedagogy perspective, the technology that supports uh, the online learning experience, along with this really kind of human approach where you, know, you have lots of engagement with learning facilitators, with each other, uh, with, with Wolfram on the program as well. You know, it's a fantastic way to learn and, and um, you know, very timely uh, at the moment too. Um, so it'd be great to see as many of you um, as possible enroll on the program and um, you know, if you do um, you'll certainly have a really valuable learning experience. Thank you. And thank you uh, Russell for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here with us. Same to you Professor Wiesen and thank you for being here with us today and to all of you on the line we hope to see each and every one of you on August 27th. Uh, with that good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening and good day to all of you from around the globe. We will see you soon.